A race is on to evacuate thousands of tourists from the Indonesian island of Bali as a volcano there spews large quantities of ash into the sky. Extra flights are being laid on to clear the backlog, at the, and at the moment, uh, winds are helping to push the cloud from Mount Agung away from the airport. But is a volcano a threat? One group is using drones to get a clearer picture of what's happening, including Dr. Adam Fish from Laxey University. He joins us now from Bali. Um, what are these pictures that the drones are getting are they dramatic well some are dramatic and some are quite um, ordinary and some aren't even pictures because we use not only optical technologies to take pictures of the volcano the crater in order to map the volcano and render it into a visual visual object but we also use complex sensors to, to smell for the presence of say sulfur dioxide which can help scientists and help the crisis management team here in Indonesia respond appropriately to this mounting crisis. So how does this detection work? Do you have to gather the data and then uh, analyze it back at base, or is it sending information in real time as it flies above this thing? We do it in nearly real time. The flights are approximately 20 minutes long from the base station where we have up to the crater, and when we get the, the craft back down, we quickly get the data out and look at it on our computers. And we can pretty much see the evidence of new craters being forming, uh, the presence or the absence of new ash developments, mud flows, etc. But really, the full data analysis requires the scientists, which sometimes aren't with us on the ground there in the jungle around the Agung volcano. Okay, so on the ground, what is that? Is that the, the shifting grounds? On the ground? Yeah, you said you, you, you said you can detect what's going on, on on the ground as well. Didn't you say that? Um, we we can do a very cursory uh, analysis and interpretation of what we see in and around the crater. Okay. Uh, but really, the technologists that I'm working with right now are a group of of hackers and inventors and entrepreneurs from a company called AeroTerraScan out of Bandung in, in Java. They're really drone and aerospace experts. The mm. real analysis should be left for the uh, volcanologists. Okay. And so what can you tell us so far about what you guys have seen? Well, we've conducted three different missions. The first one... It's been sending out gas, I know people like that, ash and smoke thousands of feet into the air. And there are fears that it might go up with a major eruption at any time. Well, senior lecturer Dr. Adam Fish from Lancaster University joins us live from Bali this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. So what's the current situation then? Hello. Well, the current situation is good news if you're a tourist or a European trying to get off of the island of Bali. Uh, they've just said that the airport, the airport is open again after a three-day closure and that they've dropped the very extreme setting of the island from Category 4 to Category 3 uh, for the volcano's potential of erupting in the, in the, in the near future. So the, so the 80 to 100,000 people that have been waiting to get off of the island and get back to their homes, uh, hopefully can be able to leave in the next day or two. Well, that's good news. For so the 150,000 people, yeah, for the 150,000 well, people that have been dis- disposed from their homes and are refugees from around the circumference of the volcano, they're still, they're still can't go home. Okay. So, so you're from Lancaster University. What, what, what are you doing with your drone there? Well, I'm, I have a the great opportunity of having a grant from the Human Trust Fellowship um, to come and study the social and political applications of drones, how drones can help us understand the environment, understand political situations, understand social situations. And so I've been having, I had the honor to work with an incredible company out of Bandu in West Java called Aero Terrascan, which has been commissioned by the Indonesian government to come and fly drones way up above and it's, uh, the, the crater of the volcano to try to collect information that might help us understand when the, the when the rough in my sky. Extra flights are being laid on to clear the backlog as winds briefly push the ash cloud from Mount Agung away from the airport. One group of experts are using drones to get a clear picture of what's happening including Dr. Adam Fish from Lancaster University. I spoke to him from Bali. The drones do more than just take video or photographs. The drones also collect gas, 
They collect, they collect, uh, data regarding what's actually coming out of the crater, coming out of the volcano. So we get not only video and pictures, but also, uh, depictions of, of the constitution of the actual ash that's coming out of the crater. So we have, yeah, we have some pretty interesting pictures that from which we can create 3D images of the volcano with which we can then reconstruct the size of the volcano to see if it's actually getting larger. As you can imagine, if it gets larger, that means it's going to potentially blow up soon. And we also get video that helps us understand exactly whether there's smoke or ash and what color and consistency the color of the ash is coming out of the crater happens to be. But what's most interesting is actually these technologies we have that help us understand whether there's carbon dioxide or whether there's sulfur dioxide coming out of the coming out of the crater itself. So the drone picks up a number of different things that are there's not only video or photography, but also other kinds of data. And crucially, will it help uh, you to predict what's going to happen next? Because that's, that's crucial, isn't it? That is certainly the goal. The goal is to help the crisis and emergency response teams here in Bali and in Indonesia predict when there might be another major eruption. Remember, there's already been two major eruptions in the last three weeks. And the information we're getting from drones hopefully is going to contribute to these scientists and these volcanologists better understanding when exactly when this volcano might erupt again. Um, but it's an, it's an imprecise science. Is it possible to put a pattern on this? Is it possible to say, yeah, this, this volcano is doing predictable things. We've seen other volcanoes doing these things, and therefore this is what we expect to happen next. The science of volcanology is really young, like a lot of our sciences are. Remember, this is a science that's only maybe 50 years old. And remember, science itself is only maybe 150 years old. And we, we've, we never have had this type of sensors Predict, being able to collect the data and the information that we need to be able to really understand how volcanoes act and the behavior of volcanoes. We're really young and in the infancy of this kind of science. So remember, drones are something that are only a few years old, and this is really the first time we've ever flown drones above volcanoes like this. Whoa. 